Warning, the RC models in this film are not intended for anyone under the age of 14. Guys, in this video, this is part three to building another one of these grave diggers, but we're doing a better one. The next one is brushless. Want to make some extra cash so you can buy more toys, quit your job, go on more holidays, or maybe build a monster truck. I've got you covered. Check out my course in the description and I'll show you how to make 100k profit a year. So in the last video we mounted the axles. I'm going to put a link to that video up there if you haven't seen it. The trouble is, these axles here are from the RGT Adventurer. And on my original build, I used the axles from the HBX Devastator. The trouble is, with these ones here, this diff pinion is further inside the axle. So what that means is that these prop shafts don't fully reach. And I did a little bit of research, I couldn't really find anything alternative that's going to fit on there. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use these axles in this build. And I'm going to have to rob another set of axles from my other Devastator, which I didn't really want to do because I've already killed one for this build. But eh, sometimes you've got to kind of destroy something good to build something even better. So there we go. I've got the old axles removed. I've got the other axles removed from the Devastator. And they're now ready to mount onto this chassis. And oh man, this poor Devastator. I want, I probably will build it up again. Maybe I can even put these axles on. I don't know. Who knows? But for now, let's focus on this one. So next, I need to cut off these little bits on top of here. Because looking at this one, they hit the chassis. So I may as well cut them off now while the axle's off. It's going to make it easier. Another thing that I just want to quickly point out. This is a Devastator axle and this is the Adventurer axles. And if you have a look at the width, look. That might not pick up on camera, but hold on. These are the Adventurer axles. So they're 45 millimeters roughly. And then we have a little look at the Devastator axles. And as you can see, look, they are quite a bit wider. So we zero that off there. These are six millimeters wider. So that would bring these wheels in by another three millimeters. And mm, I don't think that's going to be good because at full travel, look, they're already hitting the shocks. But anyway, I think we're making the right choice by using these Devastator axles. Let's get rid of these bits. Oh, don't shoot yourself in the face. Oh my God. I'm going to put the drive shaft back onto this axle. Check it out guys, that axle is now in by a decent amount look. So the rear axle has more clearance of the servo, so on this one I can leave those little luggy, blobbly, freddy bits on. Boom! So next I've got to see what sort of links we can use as the top links. So I'm going to be using the steering links from the Devastator as top links here, because they're going to hopefully come out and then I can screw it into this piece here. On the rear, a little bit more difficult. There's not really many places to screw it to it. And on this build here, I screwed it in all the way up there. But what that's doing, that's giving the rear four link bars a bit of a funny angle and it's making that rear axle behave funny as it moves up and down. And because it's got the motor in the way, you either have to go above the motor or behind the motor. So in this build, I'm gonna use some shorter links and then I'm gonna to have to glue a piece of plastic in here or something. And these are the standard upper links from the Devastator. So on the original build, I use these balls here with a thread on them. Whilst on this one, I'm going to use these balls that have got the thread on the inside. It's just going to make it easier to fit them. So I've marked out where I'm going to drill the hole for the upper four link bar. So coming from this tube here, we're looking at 7.3 millimeter to the center. And then from the bottom up, 15.5 millimeters. Actually, this whole position here is making the axle tilt a little bit too far back. So I'm going to drill the other hole just in front of this one. So here's one I did earlier. So let's bolt it back together onto that hole position and see how it looks. All right, so there we go. All on. That looks much better. So the distance of that screw hole there is... So we're looking at six millimetres there. And then for the rear, it looks like a perfect location to put the link would be there. So I've got to find a bit of plastic, glue it in there, screw it on. So I've cut out these bits of plastic here that I'm going to bond onto the chassis there. And the ideal material would be the bit that was cut out the back of this body shell. So 
So as on this one here, I'm going to be using the Devastator shocks on the rear. Reason being is that these Devastator ones are a little bit longer. So next we need to mount the top of the shock and the perfect location is just on the top of this plastic here. So I'm using the body reamer just to kind of mark the centre. Then I'm using a small drill bit just to drill out that hole. So next I'm going to use the battery compartment door as a floor to mount into there. So first things first, I'm just going to drill out each of the corners and then we can zip tie it in. So next I'm going to start mounting some electronics. So first of all I'm going to put in the speed controller and to save weight and to make the wiring more sort of nicer, not so messy, I'm just going to direct solder these wires directly to the motor. And in order to get in there with a the soldering iron, I'm just going to have to undo this bottom cradle, the four screws, drop the bottom out, solder it on and then see which way it all rotates. Because if it goes backwards, then I've got to swap over a couple of wires. So there we are, we got the motor wires soldered on. They were way too fiddly to try and film and solder at the same time. I'm hoping they're gonna be the right way around. So for the receiver, I'm gonna be using another one of these Spectrums. And don't forget guys, if you wanna know more info about all this stuff, there's links to everything that I'm using in this video down below. So the speed controller is gonna go into the throttle channel. So I've just plugged in the battery and it goes backwards. So I'm going to have to solder a couple of these wires on the other way around. So I'm not going to bore you and do all the soldering again. I'm going to do it off camera and then when I've got it all done, I'm going to put you back on. All right, all turned round. So let's give it a quick blast. Yep, going the right way now. So now let's see. This is the first go. Is it going to have enough power? Oh, I don't know. It takes a while to kick in. Look, I'm nailing it. Maybe it's got some kind of like punch control on there. Once it kicks in, it goes. Oh, I don't know guys. I'm not sure now. What's it like flat out? Well, that's really going. I mean, it's got a lot of top speed. I don't know, it doesn't want to go straight away. But once it kicks in, it goes. Maybe it doesn't like load. Hmm, I don't know what to say now guys. Maybe this brushless conversion is a failed project. But anyway, I'm gonna carry on with the build. I'm gonna put the servos in. I'm gonna finish this thing off. I've got some different ESC and motor options. Maybe this ESC here is a bit bigger. Maybe that's gonna feed it a bit more power. I don't know. I've got different motors I can try. So I'm just gonna carry on and give it another go with something else. And if worst comes to worst, then I can always revert back and put in the brushed motor like on this one here. I don't really want to go that way. I want this one, I really do want this one to be brushless. Another option could be to steal the transmission out of this crawler here because this transmission here is a lot lower geared. So I don't know if maybe just the weight of the wheels and everything is just too much for that little motor and it's kind of cogging to get going. I'm not really sure. But we're going to get this project working. I want this digger, in any case, to be an improvement over this one. And so far the suspension is much better. If we move the suspension look, that rear axle and the front axle, it's just behaving a lot nicer. On this one here, look, as we move the suspension, the rear axle's doing all funky stuff. Look, look at that diff pinion that's moving up and down. The front's not too bad. The front's pretty perfect, but the rear, yeah. So next, I've just put the servo in place. I've put the servo saver back on. On the bottom, I'll put this ball stud on the other side. Usually, it goes on the inside like that, but I turned it round. The reason being is that this axle is a little bit further forward, and it just gives it a little bit better clearance. So next, I was going to get the hot glue gun out and just put a little bit of glue in there just to stick it in. All right, we are getting there, guys. All the suspension's moving, the servo's in, all the electrics are in. So next, I've got to mount a couple of these bits here to mount the body shell. So first of all, this piece here, I'm going to glue this back into here, the same as on this one here. And then this front piece here, I'm just going to cut the end bits off, drill a hole in the middle, and glue that piece in here where the zip tie is. And then where these bulges here, I'm just going to cut that off and then re-glue it so it's a bit shorter. 
And then in the body, I'm going to cut off these two mounting points here and then put one into the center here so that can screw on. And I'm going to do all of that off the of camera. It's going to be quite boring to film all of that. That's what it's going to look like when it's done. And when I've done it, I'm going to put you back on. Guys, we did it. Everything is on. Everything's ready to go. So look, we've got steering here. We've got the rear steer here on this toggle switch. It goes. It goes backwards. The only trouble is... It's a little bit coggy. I mean, to get it going, it's a little bit hard. I just had a little play in the workshop. I'm going to show you in a minute. And once it gets going, it's all right. But off the mark, it just hasn't really got the go. So I'm not sure. I'm going to have to play about with that a bit. Try different speed controllers, different motors, maybe different transmission. If you want to know how I calibrated the radio, I'm not really sure exactly. I just sort of messed about with the settings and got it to work. So I'm going to flick through here and show you what's in each one. So travel... So if you want to pause these at any point, then just go ahead and you can copy these settings. But then you might have to sort of like, you know, reset them to your liking or whatever. Now the rear steer, I turned it down to 50% because otherwise these servos are pretty fast. And this is just like a, this switch is not proportional. It's either all on or all off. And if these wheels are just like, it, 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 it looks unrealistic. So I slowed it down on purpose. Right. And that's pretty much it guys. All right, so in the workshop, let's give you a quick demo of what it does. So as you can see, you know, once it gets going, it's fine. Look, it's quite fast. Donuts. That rear steer really does help because if you look, just the front steering, turning circle's quite big. And then you hit the rear steer, that really tightens it up. I've got to mess about with the end points. Because this way, look, it goes a lot tighter. So I know some of you guys said not to hot glue it, but guys, the hot glue just seems the easiest option. It sticks well, it's strong, uh, it's sort of quick to dry. All the other options that people were telling me, um, some of those glues are very expensive and there's still no guarantee it's gonna work. You know, a lot of glues are brittle, a lot of them take a long time to dry. The good thing with hot glue is you can just stick it on, a few seconds it's dry, you can kind of pull it off again. And I don't think it looks too bad. I mean, I could tidy it up a little bit more, I guess. But, you know, for me, it's good enough. I've got a green marker pen here. I'll just go over some of the hot glue and it just kind of just blends it in a little bit. So there you have it, guys. Pretty much done. Other than, obviously, I've got to do something with the motor. But we're going to leave it there for now. I've got the exhaust all on there. The body's all mounted up. So for now, I hope you enjoyed the video, guys. And I'm going to make another video. I'm not fully sure when. Have a little play with it and try and get it to perform a little bit better on the brushless motor. I see a lot of comments before. People saying, Kev, can you build me one? How much would you charge to build me one? And guys... I mean, it's too much work. I mean, the amount of money that I would have to charge to build one of these would be like way, way more than like even an X-Max. So just follow this build guide, build your own. And you know, I'll tell you what, I'd like to see some of your guys' creation. You know, if you guys can build something similar, maybe do some things a little bit differently. I mean, I'd love to watch every single video that anybody can make uh, about building one of these. You know, I'm really passionate about monster trucks and to build a little mini one like this, sort of semi-scale, semi-realistic, I mean, so I'd love to see some of your guys' creations.